Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to TNO with the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover, and right now we need to talk about a very new Air Force. Jeremy looked at the gleaming new jet awaiting him in the hangar. He had just finished his flying courses in an old and barely functioning biplane that wasn't even used in the war because it was so inadequate. Now he was ready for the real stuff, the big jets with big guns that went fast and flew high. Of course, I would have to wait weeks. His pilot training was not really complete as his new fighter had a lot more buttons than the old two-seat training biplane. More classes, more lectures, more busy work before he was ready and up in the sky again. Oh well, he could wait. He watches another pilot like you do, taxied off of runway 2, engine humming. Once he cornered the turn, the big jet was off the rock, off like a rocket. At least until the engines gave out. Luckily, it was landed without much fanfare and the ground crews rushed to assist. Jimmy looked at the gleaming new jet awaiting him in the hangar with a little more apprehension than before. You maybe have the mechanics double check it. Yeah, maybe. And we're doing the elections right now, which we should do fine. We're currently doing praising the aces and unfortunately, like we said in the last video, Harold Wilson is still not showing up for work, but we're going to do more pilots. Well, planes are a rather important part of any Air Force. They are not the only things required. It's our pilots that will give us the advantage, even over a numerically superior opponent. We need to look at all the talent in England to pick the very best of the best, and this includes women as well as men. Once we've recruited, tested, and trained top shelf pilots, only then we can develop the other infrastructure required to keep England safe from air attack. And there goes Norway. Welcome back. And we still have the election, so honestly, I'm not really too worried about this. I mean, it could go poorly for us, but really, I'm not... I'm not worried about it, so. I'll do Sussex. Sussex is worth 35 seats. That's pretty good. Not gonna lie, that's pretty darn good. And as we're trying to cut down the budget, we'll probably go to war with uh, the Scots in this episode. Probably? No guarantee, of course. But last time we did take out Wales, and they definitely wanted to join us last time. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I guarantee you that. They really wanted to join us. Um, actually, yeah, we'll probably find. Do more pilots. Ah, very good. Uh, let's see. Oh, what do we want? Sussex, yes. Oh, 35, 35%. We do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and toasty. And the party's looking very good. And the high command, very good as well. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Campaigning in Sussex. Ah, there we go. It's barely above there. We're looking really good. Let's do it one more time just in case we need to do it. And then we'll read American Air Force designs. Well, we certainly have the flying and fighting spirit required to make a top notch Air Force. Our engineering department is a bit short staffed at the moment. We need some time to catch up in that area, and time is something we just don't have enough of right now. We need top of the line aircraft immediately, and so we may want to turn to those with established industries. The Americans are already somewhat amicable towards us and would always be willing to sell weapons to nations that Germany dislikes. The first rate planes, with our first rate pilots, surely cannot be beat. Absolutely. Alright, give us a few more days, and then what? Um, we don't have enough time for Newcastle, probably. With 13% difference, 15%. Ah, Northern Wales. 8 seats there, 13 seats. And, oh, Cornwall. Oh, well, I guess that was pretty close, anyways. Oh, we're good here, we're good here. Uh, pretty good. Pretty okay. Pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Yeah, we've got a lot of support here. As you can see, we've got a lot of support, which is awesome. More recon companies. Actually, on our infantry divisions that we're currently using, these guys are using recon engineers and Opti, which is good to see. And I apologize for speaking fast, it just... I'm a fast speaker, man. Uh, lower the support, because you can. Alright, follow it up with what? The issue of conscription. In both world wars, conscription has been quite controversial and remains even so today. We are small and an industrious nation, and the more men we keep in the factories and off the front lines, the better. However, there are walls at the door, and some of the hardliners are pressing hard that we need every pair of hands we can get to defend a revolution. Should we fold to them, the government may become more unpopular, but if we don't, who knows what the future may have? It's time to make a choice about what size our military really needs to be. That's a good point to bring up, yes. 13% uh, difference. Oh, they're trying to go down here, too. All right. That's fine with us. You know, whatever. They're, they're trying to, you know, campaign. Let them campaign. Fair and square. The spirit of Jaro. Scotland has always been home to the ardent revolutionaries willing to throw off their lives or throw their lives down if a man getting just one step closer to liberation. Well, sometimes that struggle was co-opted for narrow-minded nationalism. On other occasions, it meant vigorous working-class resistance. The brave organizers of the Gero March in 36 showed how the Scottish worker will stand up to acts of capitalist violence committed against them, and we hope that the same spirit can animate or animate the working class as we attempt to reunite our fraternal nations. While Scottish lands is dotted with many productive factories and waters are what's what's most promised to pay dividends for the British working class, the North Sea is one of the richest spots for fishing in Europe, but that is meager compared to the many potential petroleum pr resources. If we can turn these over to a plural national working class, British socialism can become just that much more fortified. The workers cannot wait for a second longer for liberation, knowing, of course, that we will respect their many unique traditions. If the Edinburgh bourgeoisie attempts to strong arm the rest of the nation, we'd expect the mass armed masses to be greeted with open arms as they take on the Scottish reaction. The pharaohs of Jarl shall not be in vain, and you know what? I'm going to cancel this. Because this is going to force us to do something else, probably, right? Yep, see, the light in the north. To the north, Scotland stands alone, ready to defend itself from all comers. This is a bit of an issue for us, but there are some signs that a peaceful unification could happen with us. If that's the case, 
Oh, uh, well, the infantry attack, I'm probably going to actually maybe set up a naval invasion, actually. Uh, and we can also go from Hull. And do there. Oh, how long will that take? 42 days? Um, we can't really do that. Um, I think I'll maybe cut you guys down in half so we can share the wealth of these. Oh, well, yeah. That's why we'll need less guys. We can have to stock up these guys a little bit more thicky. And that will help us improve this up a little bit faster. 28 days, that's not too bad. All right. Willing to negotiate? We'll, we'll read these whenever we get ready. The conference begins. A group of diplomats walk onto the plane at Heathrow. It leaves the ground early in the morning. In an hour or so, it will be in Edinburgh. When it lands, negotiations will begin. Negotiations that will determine the fate of the British Isle and the people on it. Negotiations that will, if successful, will unify Scotland and England once again. Negotiations may finally allow us to take the mantle of the UK of old. These will be hard. The Scottish will certainly draw the hardest bargain they can, but they will not surrender their freedom for nothing in return. And failure on our part will certainly lead to another massive war on the island, one which will exact a large cost in lives on both sides. Let's get them talking because we need like 22 more days three more weeks so we can actually invade them the talks begin in Edinburgh a room is full of people on one side sits a group of English diplomats on the other officials of the Scottish government they look at each other sizing each other up they have to things are just too important to not pay attention the negotiations for the future of Scotland have begun will Scotland enter England as an equal partner will the original arrangement with Scotland in a f act of union be maintained or will something in between be agreed to it remains to be seen but one thing is pretty certain if negotiations fail here a war will surely break up between the two nations let's do this honestly even though we're like socialists right now I really don't want to give them an inch. I don't want to give them a single inch. Either join us or die. Because we did the same with, with Wales, and they said no. So I'm like, okay, well. Our opening offer. Let's start with the opening proposal. The ideal situation is we end up where Scotland was under the Act of the Union. Obviously, that would be more than acceptable to us, and something reasonable we can ask for. We wouldn't give the Scots a worse deal than they once had, and they would reject it outright anyways. Of course, they probably won't like this one either. They will, in all likelihood, ask for something a bit better on their end. We should be preparing to receive this notice and think about our next steps. But you aren't going to just annex an independent nation without giving them some autonomy in return. This isn't the 30s. We have to start with something. Spend, spend more. I'm not going to get down the military budget because we're probably actually going to need it, so. And we still want more political power, too, so. It is what it is. And we use a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm. All right. Thank you. And Northern Wales hopefully will be ours. Newcastle is actually probably worth a little bit more. A little bit more. Which is, oh, days until election. Oh, well, well election time. Cool. The decision of a free people. Months of advertisement, speeches and rallies, debates, arguments and insults, shouting and heated discussion. And now it all comes down to this, the choice of the people of England. Both parties have been battling hard to ensure the victory of the polls. Could they have done more? Could have some missteps have been avoided? Could this campaign have been conducted more positively? Perhaps. But both campaigns have done whatever they could to ensure a victory in the coming elections. Nothing less than the very future of the country is at stake. After their ballots are cast, the people of England scurry home to turn on the TVs and radios to see who the winner is. Many have predictions, many have biases and hopes. Others have polls and samples behind the thinking, but there's only one way to know for sure what has happened, and that is to count the votes. The Socialist Labour Party wins! Who saw that one coming? We did! Good job, Wilson's triumph. Do you mean to insult me, asks the Scottish negotiator? Nobody's going to agree to become a puppet of London up here, not after we've had quite free... Quite a bit of freedom for so long. We want more than just a status quo, far more. We'll keep on our, our own parliament, our own elections. English laws will stop at the border as well. We'll take care of our own business. Taxation will be left to us. And massive protections for our language must be left in as well. Do you want a union? And then it's going to have a, be a union of equals. I mean, we already took out Wales. Like, it just makes sense. Like, we we would probably give them more freedom, but, you know, whatever. Okay. How about a Scottish council instead? You can have some limited autonomy. Hmm... Wilson's triumph, the second election in the new England, was always going to be about one thing only, the current government. Unlike the past one where the population would decide on a new England, this one was about if if this England was the one they really wanted. They decided to give the Wilson government another term or try something new, and the people chose a socialist labor party. A leftist direction was preferable to many of the voters instead of the NDL's brand of right-wing econo economics and social policies. The population wanted a new direction, and the SLP delivered with a promise to fight against many of the economic ills that ail the population bef since before the war, and it's still being the party of Bill Alexander helped convince many people to give them their ballot. In a victory speech, the Prime Minister Harold Wilson promised to continue his crusade on what deemed the five giants that doomed much of England to poverty. Many are optimistic that he'll be able to get the job done, but the point, some point out that he still has a few hardliners to worry about potentially subverting his control, and he should take care to see they are locked out of his administration for good, lest they do the same to him. A better world is still possible. Look at that man. If you smoke too much, it's going to kill you, but that's okay. The red flag still flies here, my friends. Alright, high command looking pretty good. We're, we're poised to go. Like, don't mess with us. We're getting more pee-pee every day, but sometimes you just want more pee-pee. 
I could, we could really use more factories, though. This is the last one we're building. Oh. Scotland, you won't be able to win. And they're taking so long. Oh, well, we'll get some naval supremacy, too, so I'm not really worried about that. Well, in my defense, this council would work, says the Scottish negotiator. That's acceptable. There's a problem. How would we defend ourselves? Scotland is in a unique situation. One which requires a degree of military force. It has been We have been in an occasional tense situation with the Kriegsmarine in the sea. There's not the possibility that they may seek to invade us. And where would we be of all the forces in the south? We need our own militia to defend ourselves with. All right, you can have that. Nope. Either accept the offer we gave you or else. I'm going. I'm playing hardball with them. Like, If they want to say no, that's fine with me. That's absolutely fine with me. Because we're ready to invade right now. Give us, give our infantry a better fighting chance with more entrenchment. I mean, they do have tanks. But we should have arm, like, piercing on our guys anyways because of the anti-tank we need for them. So the piercing is 20. Not bad, not great. Actually, how much uh, anti-tank do we have? We have none probably, right? Yep. Equal exchange. Two things are happening today, both in Edinburgh and both at the same time. At the Redford Cavalry and Infantry Barracks, a group of 51st Highlanders stand outside looking at a flagpole. A group of press and onlookers are standing outside the Scottish Government building as well, looking at two flagpoles instead. One has nothing flying, while the one to the left has St. Andrew's Cross. While an army band plays the Scottish National Anthem, the Scottish flag at Redford is taken down. The soldiers look on in silence, some cries, others keep a stern face throughout, then the band strikes a new tune, then another flag is raised up the pole. At the same time, the song is played in front of the Scottish government building, and the same flag is being hoisted. The emotions are a lot less subdued here. Some cry while some cheer. It was a sad event, but there's a silver lining to it. The song is the English national anthem. The flag is on the one of the is the one of a united isle. And at the end of the song, the flag flying all the way up. England has gained control over Scottish the military, and Scotland has its own council. Jolly good. We get Scottish rights, whatever. Scottish council. Oh God, I should have not said anything. I, we're forced to do that, aren't we? We're literally forced to do that. Hmm. Every own state, royal party support will decrease. I hate this one, man. I, I, I'd rather just go to war. Like, seriously, just let us kill each other off. Let it be decided on the field of battle. Uh, these divisions, I don't want them. I, I don't even want them. I'm going to delete some of our divisions actually here, too, probably, actually. Uh, but we'll see. For now, since, well, like, I don't know. I don't like the Scottish Council. It hurts our pee-pee. Why do we do that for Wales? I mean, technically, we did militarily take them out, which is what I want to do with Scotland. Just so that way, that way we get we can do whatever we need to do to make sure that they are prosperous and we're prosperous. So I mean, but they just had to throw a hissy fit, didn't they? Sorry, Doom, but if you want to read about that, please go hold out. Please read that if you want to. Uh, willing to negotiate. Our moves have yielded results. Scotland is willing to discuss peaceful unification. We must give them a tempting offer. I don't know about that. Because now we have, like, no political power. 0.24 every day. That's going to cripple us for the rest of the campaign. A marriage. Peace and reason have us won the day. Scotland and England will be together at last, yielding a great victory for both nations. Which, I mean, this is okay in terms of, like, you know, trying to get people to, you know, join us and help us out, but still. Like, bro. Oh, hello. Reformation of the Commonwealth of England. Of Britain. Pragmatism wins again. And this is okay, but Cable Street Avenge. Uh, cool. It's so soft that we, you won't even be able to hear it. So my apologies. Uh, I'm sure you can find it elsewhere on YouTube too. But like, like the way I have it set up, it's really hard to hear the music. Even if I turn off all, all the music and don't even talk, it's really, really hard to hear. The bagpipe scene no more. The Scotland is now part of our nation proper. We must educate these new citizens about our way of life and take care of any more national resistance that we encounter. Less political power, more war support, not bad. Uh, marriage, huh? Who's getting divorced? Oh yeah, we, at least we can do this though. And is it worth it? I don't know. I don't like the council. Get rid of the council. The council doesn't deserve to exist. But, full under the campaign, of course. Oh, 37%. That's bad. Not bad. The workers of Britain free. From Land's End to the Highlands in Edinburgh, C London, Cardiff, and many other cities, and the mines and farms of the countryside, Britain is now free. Free from poverty and strife, free from reactionary extremists, and free of the worst elements of capitalism. Britain is now one, and it is a better union with one which came before. Now, we've got to get through a lot of this stuff, too, but I do notice that we have all this stuff down here, too. So, I think I'm going to keep going down with this one next, after we get this workers of Britain freed. Uh, but I will go back and do the focuses that I asked you yesterday, like, with the choices and such. So, we'll get there eventually. Um, do that one, that's fine. There you go. Have a good time. Nice. Really just disappointed that we couldn't just go to war with them and not have to do the council. They mean their own council, which is fine. But, let's see what happens with it. We get the red flag flying. Well, actually, you know what? Let's do, let's do one of these. Because I, I don't want to read these again. So, let's go through some of these before we do anything else. 
Uh, let's do that one first. Cool. So I did ask you guys yesterday whether we should do lessons from the Civil War versus keeping the militias. And overall, you guys recommended lessons from the Civil War. Why overwhelming support? While we can create a fairly large army, it will be likely that in the future wars we will be somewhat outnumbered, as well as we were in the English Civil War. No amount of conscription or militia troops can change the fact that we are a small island against the whole of Europe, however. We adapted to this in the English Civil War by using strong concentrated strike forces to break enemy lines and exploit weaknesses. We can use veteran troops as shock division, and use the SAS to complement them in disorganizing enemy units and breaking cohesion in the rear areas. This will mean that we may be outnumbered, but we will never be outgunned to the place in time we choose. Jerry may think of himself a master of these tactics, but we will th show him a thing or two about English doggedness and strength and adversity. Alright, issue of conscription. Yeah, so after this one, we're going to come down here. We kept the red flag flying. Uh, of course, after we get the regun company done, of course. Happy 69, 69, very nice, very nice, very nice. <clears throat> we have won the elections once again. Many have said it was impossible for us to win a second term, but we have done it. Harold Wilson has held on to his position as Prime Minister and Party Leader. Now that we have won a second term, we can begin to focus very heavily on the deep, societal issues that plague England. We as a country and party must be better if we wish to uh, must succeed for the future. We will become the lead... Barry Goldwater has been elected. I've never seen this one happen before. Um, the Become the leading socialist country in Europe and even possibly the world. However, time will tell this dream could... pop truly come true. These next few months will be pivotal for both our party and country, as reforms well will come into play and new acts will be passed as we attempt to bring socialism to this country. So from here on out, we're going to try to get, we're going to try to do acts that have to get passed. Why do we make a division here? Oh, it's because of the thing, yeah. Oh, that's locked. Oh, well. Oh, Scottish, I don't, don't even bother with this stuff. Alien infantry, nope. We don't even believe that here. So, yeah, so what my my goal, so with this, this part of the tree, we're going to do an act, and then we'll go back to the military side. Oh, can't do that, that's fine. Uh, a new age. Uh, it's a new age. England seems to be entering a new age, and as we are heading into the next decade, it seems, we'll make it through with the flying colors, and England will be seen as a power. Socialism in England has finally set itself down and is ready to be placed into English society, which will reforms that will better the nation in any way. Of course, Harold Wilson will be the focal point of this, and lead socialism into a pivotal position for the rest of England. Acts will need to be made so that socialism can fit nicely into the place, right besides democracy and freedom for all English and whoever chooses to come to a great country to live. However, we'll need to root out the corruption in government and the SLP as a whole. Once again, of course. And I'll get that down. Oh. Did I spend more on here? I'm going to spend more on here. Maybe not. Probably not, actually. Keep building, boys. When you're done, you're not done building. You're never done building. At this point, I'm not going to go ahead and uh, do any more of this stuff. Just because we're going to need to keep this PP. 0.24 is crippling. That is insanely bad. Once more for the people, my friends. Followed up with... Coffee. Our goals. We have organized a time during the first meeting of the SLP post-election. This will be when Prime Minister Wilson will announce his goals and ambitions, but before then we must draft a plan of what we truly want to accomplish during these years. Many ideas have been tossed around, such as an act against nepotism and expanding the national healthcare system. However, one problem that presents itself to our party only is the presence of Kim Philby. Or Philby! Oh, I must, must have been mispronouncing his name, my apologies. While his work has greatly be benefited our intelligence service due to their experience, their loyalties lie with Reginald Butch. While Birch is a member of our party, he is the leader of the growing base of radicals within our party. We must figure out a way to deal with him. Keep cutting it down for now. 52 billion is not bad while well, the economy is growing very nicely. But not very much. Honestly, it's not very much. Pragmatism less ruthless. The night before, the Association of Hot and Cadre met to discuss the current conditions of revolutionary England when they were hiding, or hiding in grimy bunkers and running from house to house. Most of them were ardent in their beliefs that once power and all reactionary opposition should be destroyed. If it could be uh, the collaborationists, it could beat the opponents of revolution. When Wilson took over the SLP, they, of course, viewed him as a counter-revolutionary, a liberal in red clothing, but his steadfast backing by the hero Bell Alexander, and the host of popular reforms already passed despite so-called bourgeois elements still prevailing. These vigorous men thought it was perhaps time to consider Lenin's ruthless pragmatism. As the sun broke over the Thames, the five suited party members prepared their makeshift stage near the House of Commons, ready to give a speech billed as an urgent intervention among comrades. Well, and the most ardent of supporters showed up to watch the speech Bill Alexander sitting comfortably in his front row, they expected the announcement of some new revolutionary campaign in some, some way to carry the torch of the Communist Party. None of them anticipated what was actually being said. Comrades, began the oldest of the five, a balding yet slim man with a serious case of vocal fry. We are all ardent disciples of Comrade Alexander. We risked our lives to bring socialism to Britain. Like most of you, we believe that only through a vanguard's party complete control over the nation could we ever hope to achieve the highest stage of communism. After much discussion based on present material conditions, we see this analysis as incorrect. 
Cheers quickly turned to a shock, a few jeers piercing the air, then quieting down as the men took turns, calmly outlining their position. Bell Alexander, always believe in bringing moderates to our side, they said, and we cannot win support by simply establishing a new dictatorship. Revolution is not being deflected, they said, but rather adapting to contemporary Britain and the needs of its working class. Already came the declaration, vastly successful for reforms that began to be implemented with promises of great gains for all. Finally, we are revolutionaries through and through. We will die without beggar. That is why we all ask of you to support the government of Harold Wilson, as Comrade Alexander has done since day one. Birch has been cast to the wind. Great, great, great. Once more for the people. Thank you, comrades, once again. Thank you for your support. We are honored to serve you and all Englishmen for the second term. This vote cast at the ballot box is a totem of, of trust for us and our work, of course. It proves that socialism can not only be popular, but effective as well. Uh, once again, thank you, and let us sing as we all did last time. The people's flag is deepest red. It shrouded oft armada dead. Even though we have already maxed out reformist stuff, so... I don't know, I just wish there was more stuff we could do with political power here. Yeah, this is good, and we need to do this stuff. But, like, Reformation is already done. Like, that's why I was kind of saying, like, is there nothing here for societal development? And yes, England is fairly well established in terms of society and societal development, but I just wish there's a little bit more. Like, one thing I was thinking of off-screen here, I was like, historically, because I looked up Harold Wilson in real life, and he, I think he called, like, snap elections once and won big time or something like that. I think that'd be cool if you could play as England and maybe United, you know, Commonwealth of Britain, Scotland... Wales, once you have them under us, uh, or with us, like, call snap elections. Like, if the other party is, like, gaining ground, uh, that'd be so cool if, I don't know, just call snap elections. I, I don't know. I, that's something I just thought that would be really awesome. But maybe that's just an American thing. The challenge is in front of us. Today is the day that Prime Minister Wilson makes a speech to the SOP party members. We had recently read it over a few nights ago to make sure it was all telling of our, our goals. The main focal point of the speech is the challenges that we as a party will face in our goal of bringing socialism to England. A place where nepotism and class differences are engraved into the everyday society of England. Wilson also written down a smaller list that he will later say to the public in his post-victory speech, detailing his plans for the next few years. Obviously, there will be opponents in the NDL, however, their voices are like a gnat to us. We shall succeed in our goals, even if it means we need to thin down the NDL. A plan for England. Electoral Manifesto of the Socialist Labour Party. The SLP, created in the wake of the Civil War, claims direct descendants from the Labour Party of the pre-war UK, adapting its policies and values to the modern era. We run on a staunch platform of republicanism, socialism, and progressivism, espousing liberty and equality for all. After our re-election, we shall implement the following. Female emancipation and increased societal participation. The continuation and strengthening of our newly regained democracy. Welfare programs, education, and socialized free the point of use of healthcare. Secularism and religious freedom. Bringing the collaborators and traders of justice, military, economic, and political cooperation with the OFM. Long live England. Socialism, liberty, progress. The five grants. Disease. Oh my goodness. High income. You get even... Oh, we're going to literally lose political power almost if we take this one. Like, I want to do it, but holy crap. Want. That's not bad. I mean, good Jesus Christ. This is going to explode, like, the debt. Or at least it can, but still. Um, idleness. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Let's do that one. Five grants. The Beverage Report is a moderately sized document written during the course of the Second World War. Though buried by the royal party and their fascist colleagues in the aftermath of our defeat and the collapse of the British Empire and the minds of the Labour members of the left resistance, the report persevered. Now that the Socialist Labour Party is in the one the power, we have a duty to uphold. We shall scourge from England the great evils of the world. Our people will be free of disease, want for nothing, be enlightened, live in good housing, and have every opportunity to benefit from the work. Everything before now has led up to this. We shall give the people the lives they've always wished for and deserved, regardless of what the reactionaries may say. As long as we can afford it, and even then, we'll still give it to them. This deficit, we're not going to have this for <laughs> very soon. But the one who got away, uh-oh, isolate him. The best of the best. The MI6 power act. Friendship has just begun. Well, yeah, it seems like we want to go reform, so it's, it's all about fill the B. Fill the B. Oh, that's not bad, but it's not great. The challenge is ahead. Comrades, we worked hard last term to fulfill our promises. Wilson started a speech to the ministers, and we were able to implement many of the reforms we wanted to. Of course, there were always some rough patches in the unfortunate mess that nearly split the party uh, included, but I'm still proud of the work we've done. Proud doesn't mean content, however. We still have a lot to do, and challenges are plenty. Expect resistance from the NDL capitalists, landowners, nobles, and ex-collaborators. But there's one more thing, the issue of a certain Kim Philippi. As we all know, he served the cause of the resistance as well as a double agent, but after the war he aligned himself with Birch and his old guard, and somehow avoided being kicked from the party. Watch out for him. You never know what he might do but idleness. For all that the conservative reactionaries like to go on about how we socialists encourage people to be lazy with their lives and government support, they will forget that the vast majority of people are quite willing to take 
make any work offered when in a state of unemployment. Thus, if we, if we, the government, provide the steady and decent paying work, a large number of people will be suddenly in a position of becoming productive members of the economy once more. We might have to nationalize a good many industries to achieve this. The companies are unlikely to cooperate of their own accord, but the results will mostly be assuredly worth it. Nationalization will additionally assist us in preventing the Americans from having a death grip on our economy, but that is the most unrelated to our decision. An invitation from Germania. The big daddy, Führer Martin Bormann, sent a formal invitation to our nation. He's invited us to participate in the North Sea Oil Conference, which will be designated to settle disputes surrounding the German po proclamation of North Sea oil rights. While the Germans would listen to our protestations is beyond us. Nonetheless, we shall send representatives of the English government to humor the request. Let's hope this conference heralds good news and the North Sea oil. The nation of Norway has responded to the Führer's North Sea Declaration. Claiming that the oil to the west belongs to the nation, the government of Norway called upon Martin Bormann to announce the Reich's claim immediately. Naturally, we'll do no such thing. After all, the Norwegians do not truly care about such things. They are better off, just bitter over their embarrassing defeat in 1940 and subsequent occupation. The oil shall be ours, of course. All nations except Norway, Denmark, England, and Scotland have, well, no Scotland, have accepted Germany's invitation to be in, to the upcoming North Sea Oil Conference, where the nautical borders will be settled and the status of the northern shelf settled once and for all. The five giants. Idleness, yes. After a great deal of effort, the foundations of the new economy have been laid out and work can begin on eradicating poverty in the country once and for all. All that stand in the way of the road to the reconstruction of the five giants that we must overcome. Once has become one of the most pressing issues of a nation. The people have been left imp impoverished by the fascists and the civil war. We had to fight to overthrow them, yet we've already made great strides getting towards more of them off the streets and into work. However, those who remain jobless will also be in need of our protection, and the government has already come up with a plan to defeat each giant. Disease has always been a financial burden for the poorest in society. As a result, many cannot afford proper treatment, and their ailments often deteriorate. This has had for some time an area, been an area in which capitalism has failed society. A robust national health service will replace the old model and ensure equal care for all. Ignorance is the most important giant to defeat for the future prosperity of England, as the next generation will need to be property, properly taught in order for them to continue improving society in the future. New schools will have to be built, with new curriculum to match. Squalor has unfortunately built up within England's inner cities. Slums have appeared as people have been able, unable to afford their homes. These will have to be cleared to make way for the new programs of council houses that will soon be introduced. Idleness will have to be struck down swiftly. The effects of unemployment on the people have been disastrous and many just want to get back into work. More key industries are to be nationalized by the SLP and a comfortable wage will be offered to those that the government employs. The time will begin to fight uh, against poverty is upon us, or upon the government, and to, they will not likely stop their efforts until every one of their aims are achieved and the lives of the people are made better than they have ever been before. There's much work to be done. Absolutely. And all nations, the nations accept a meeting in Bremen. All delegates from Norway, Denmark, England, Scotland all met up in the English or German city of Bremen, where they've awaited the invitation uh, to the North Sea Oil Conference. They've been provided with excellent accommodation and service on behalf of the German government. While some see this as a simple good gesture of goodwill, others view it as a cynical negotiation tactic. The U.S. of A. delegates also arrived, spending much time deliberating with their English and allies and acting just as suspicious about the luxurious treatment. Who knew the right could solve issues with diplomacy? The nations accept. After much uh, debate inside the government hall and private discussion outside of it, the delegates of uh, those groups have all agreed to Germany's wild demands in the name of peace. The Reich's claim of the North Sea oil will remain undisputed, and each country present will officially recognize the legality of such claims. The American delegates had a firm say in directing England towards its final decision, claiming that any resistance to Germany's ultimatum could trigger a nuclear war between the OFN and the Einheitspact. The delegates have now returned to their countries of origin to face the judgment of their leaders, with their tails tucked between their legs. The oil shall float. Thanks a lot, Barry Goldwater. What, what are you doing over there? For their minimum wage act. Why is it that such the average worker should have to subsist on minimum wage barely updated since the days of the Royal Party? Are we not better than the fascists who betrayed England to the Germans? Harold Wilson certainly seems to think so, and he's tasked with the Social Labour Party with drawing up a new legislation on the subject of minimum wage. We'll have to raise it carefully and in a controlled manner, of course, yet the benefits of the raise will still take some time to make themselves apparent. The long-term effects of the National Minimum Wage Act will mean the average Englishman having more capital to contribute to the economy, amongst others. So even the reactionaries ought to be happy. Germany's offer. Did we already give... It was, it was already settled for us. Why do we get penalized then if it's not settled? The delegates have gathered around a large circular table in a spacious meeting room. A rather unnecessary large map of the North Sea is on display at the front of the room. Framed by two German flags, and in front of every delegate sits a glass of water, a pile of notes, a name card, and a small flag denoting their nation. Our English delegates have been joined by their American allies for observing proceedings with a request of neutrality. In an obvious display of mockery, the German delegates made intense eye contact with the OFN representatives as they delivered their ultimatum. The Germans have presented their deal to the, North Co to the conference attendees. They hold on to their claims over the North Sea oil riots, and anyone who disagrees will face vague consequences. At the foreign delegates yield, however, they must sign a scrap of paper signaling their sig a nation's absolute ac acceptance. Let's see what happens. This is probably going to explode the world, probably. But we're going to save. 
Do not be propensity for conflict and not be under underestimated. Go suck yourself, barman. Until we... Man, yeah, whatever. Hmm. Oh no, Omsk. You had such promise. It's alright, though. And they see his Baratinas and Rayu and Young. Oh, where's gonna get? Alright, I said he plays Barry Goldwater, the town is recording, but whatever. Idleness and minimum minimum wage. Cool. Alright, did we get to do that now? Not yet. So after that, we're gonna go ahead and do the one who got away. No, we're gonna do the flaws of the nation. Flaws in society. Uh, oh my gosh, we're gonna lose political power. But we get more political power for like a year. That's not bad. Ooh, I like that one too. Ooh, flaws in the party? Uh, let's do flaws in the nation. While England could seem perfect uh, to the unassuming English man or woman, this shouldn't or couldn't be far, more farther from the truth. We've made some reforms, but we've much, much more work to do to make sure that England is truly the best country that can be. While some of our political opponents may see these reforms as too radical, we can just rub these complaints off. One of the largest issues that has plagued England too long is the amount of nepotism that has taken hold in Parliament and daily English life. It is a plague on the good natured people of society. We must find a way to rid the country of this problem fast. However, there are other problems that we can focus on until we can bring this to Parliament, mainly being corruption and general in our government. We must eradicate this first if we want to truly free England. Ah, uh, actually, we'll do this one too. Cool. Let time go on for now. Guns are fine. No worries about the... Oh, God. That stuff? Oh, give that. Improved anti-tank? Oh, boy. Well, that's definitely not ideal. There you go. Lower by five. There you go. Nice. The minimum wage act. Well. Oh, effects of unification. Oh, that's good. More stability. Oh, do we not have cores on them? Oh, that's actually really nice. I didn't realize we didn't have cores on them. Can't build any more in there, which sucks, actually, but whatever. Cool. Minimum wage act Reno and the flaws in the nation. Now we must decide how we're going to do this. You can close this up for now, probably, actually. 90% is still pretty good. Um, we need, uh, oh my gosh, we need a lot of people. I don't think we're going to have another election here, so it doesn't really matter. We need 271. We have 228. Um, we can get a lot of these guys. I don't want to spend 100 here, but... Oh, we got them. Nice. Now, that unfortunately does boost up the NDL a lot more, but... 289. So we need 271? That'll work. For now. Uh, the flaws in society, because I don't want to improve poverty. I definitely, definitely, definitely want to improve poverty, so the flaws in society... We, while we've made some reforms, the country still bears wounds from when the royal party have been in power. Our people, the English people, who have been oppressed by the Germans and authoritarians for years, are still being oppressed by the, none other than dangerous capitalists and capitalism. Luckily, we can begin to reform heavily in these areas to improve our society. First, however, we must go after those in Parliament that take heavy donations from corporations and become puppets for them. They are one of the main dangers to society due to their exploitation of the vulnerable in every way. Once we have dealt with them, we can take a look at our own party and even the NDL, if time allows it. Social Democracy Act, huh? We've got a lot of work to do here. Holy crap. I just hope we have enough political power for this stuff, man. I really do. Socialist Education. Sense of Recovery. Oh, that is actually really good. Oh, I want to do all these things, but... Oh, my goodness. Actually, a new reform. We'll have to get through everything anyway, so it's going to take some time. That's just going to seriously take some major time. But those who exploit the weak... In our society, many people in power exploit the weak, whether they are a CEO of a corporation or a simple constable who has overstepped their boundaries and have broken a law. They should be dealt with using the utmost justice possible that we can bring them. However, while it may seem wise to go after the so-called top dogs of these companies and civil services, it could cause quite a large outcry from the general public, so it seems that we need to start small and then build up to a much larger fish that we can bring down these charges. This would have never occurred if the NDL was in power, and certainly not if the collaborators have been in power. While this vote could be seen as controversial at first, it would eventually be accepted that as time goes on and the exploitation slows down. Oh, flamethrowers! Socialist flamethrowers! Sounds hot. Which is kind of nice. We're just trying to save the budget for now. Cut this down as much as we can because it's going to explode soon. Well, maybe not soon, but soon enough. I guess I'll just train because you're training? Or are you, are you just training for because you can? Train because you can. Those who are corrupt. I definitely do want to do that one, though. 
the plaza and system. Ooh, we lose PP, but the plight of the proletariat. For all of our previous work, English society still has a long way to go before being, becoming a truly egalitarian, peaceful, and just nation. Land redistribution, the nationalization of resources in noble land, as well as the empowerment of women in the working class were big steps in the right direction. Yet problems and obvious injustices still remain. Stories of mistreatment by landlords and business owners are hot topics in the press, and with many being excused or accepted by some NDL MPs. Just to give an example, last week, a mother and three children were evicted from an apartment building in Manchester for not paying the exorbitant rent in time. The woman in question was employed, but simply had no money to pay the landlord, as she had to feed her children first. This did not concern the building owner in the slightest, and he threw her out after she missed two, just two payments. After the incident, an investigation found that he already had several clients lined up for her flat. Similar stories are coming in from all over the country. Preston, York, Norwich, Dover, Birmingham, London, stories of abuse in the workplace, evictions, on just firings. Well, honestly, if they've already have people there, and he already gave her two months, I mean, that's trying to be as balanced as you possibly can. You gotta look at both sides, man. Like, I get it. That sucks. That's really bad. But, bro. Like, it sounds like he was working for her. Like, trying to help her out. It's two payments, man. I know. Landlords. Landlords are landlords. But landlords are still landlords. So. But regardless, the act passes. English history's written. Very nice. More su Why do we lose max factories? Ugh, minimum wage. I don't like minimum wage. You know, I always wonder. Well, so, minimum wage, it hurts max factories in the state. Hmm. I guess it kind of makes sense. Alright, well, whatever. Reformations, I mean, this is a really boring part of the fo focus for the decision. To, just because it, once you get it done, there's nothing else that goes on there. Um, I do want to get to more acts as fast as possible for the most part. Equal opportunity. Um, let's do want. No, oh, 9% angry. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ignorance. Harold Wilson was an academic before circumstances forced him to, into the life of a revolutionary and leader, but remnants of the former economics lecture remain in his policy still. The Socialist Labor Party is committed in its entirety to the idea of a comprehensive and effective school system for the future students of England. And to the end of promoting this, the government will issue grants to a great number of school programs and improvements. Additionally, the great universities which help shape many of England's uh, finest in past times, or see funding of their own to restore the glories. No longer will we look to the rest of the world for academic success, as in all things England shall forge her own. And there goes Egypt. I like, I never noticed, but I like his bell buckle. Very cool. Ignorance, yeah. You gotta, you gotta pay for the school somewhat. I don't know how much England's spends on their schooling system. Education system. Schooling system? Education? But Equal Opportunity Act next. Schooling is not an easy burden for a family to bear. It is expensive. And when your child might not be even getting the proper use out of schools. Uh, sc schooling seems a dead end for many families across England. Yet, are we not the party of the people? Are we not socialists in the image of Marx, Atlee, and Pullet? We should not let what has been con Convention define us in improving our nation. Indeed, Harold Wilson has crafted an act to ensure we need never worry about this problem again. The Equal Opportunity Act will make all schooling and most higher education free for all Englishmen and women, provided that they get the results to enter. As we do this, we ought not to think of the cost, but of the benefits to our nation and people from the many young minds not being hindered by birth. This was and shall be a good act. Yeah, unfortunately, we, we got to keep boosting that baby up, even though we, we really don't need it for construction. I just need it for PP because we get point two four with that PP with extra boost, extra boost. Oh, come on, please. Um, where are we? Oh, that's gonna take so long to improve. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. So long. What was it? Like in the United States, how much the federal government spends on education? It was like 3% of the budget or something? It's something just ridiculously tiny. Ridiculously tiny. Ah, that's anti-tank. Ah, who needs schools when you have anti-tank equipment? We don't need schools here, huh? I look at one of these portable things out of, that's like, like Metal Gear Solid 5. The Vicar's Vigilant. Oh, okay, cool. Very nice. Uh, oh, yeah, this stuff. Cool, awesome, awesome, awesome. It is almost 1970. Actually, at this point, let's get this one, too. There we go. It's a little bit ahead of time, but I don't care. Follow it up with... Actually, you know what? Let's just... Ooh, uh, not that one yet. No, no, no. Oh, ah, oh, poverty gets better, but the cost... I'm kind of okay with that, but this one... This is literally the last thing we'll do here, because I, we, we can't afford that. We cannot afford to lose 0.2 more political power. That's insane. That's, 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 that's too much. That's literally just too much. I'm sorry, but squalor. The bombs of Germany destroyed vast swaths of old English housing, swaths which have never been properly rebuilt, if we were honest. Lennon, once home to a beautiful scenery, is now shares its land with slums stretching as far as the eye can see. And so, too, do many of our fellow cities and towns across England. And the Civil War only made the situation even more dire. Regrettable though it may be, we must clear out these slums to build affordable housing for the English people. The first step of this will not be the popular with anyone, and most likely hated in London in particular, but... It is a necessary evil. Provided we stagger the clearances in buildings, we should even avoid a homelessness crisis. We'll see what happens. 
I have literally no opinion on that, so. Hopefully we can do the right thing. Whatever that may be. I just want to build more civvies, man. Uh, look at that. 11, 11 out of 10. 24 out of 23. Wimberley publishes memoirs. Field, Douglas, uh, Field Marshal Douglas Wimberley. As a controversial figure on the British Isles, many in Scotland have believed he was instrumental in keeping Scotland secure from German occupation. Others see him as a traitor and paranoid madman. This is Wimberley himself mm -mm, to appear, reappear in the public eye to release a new autobiography that he hopes will cause the misconceptions of his time as Chief of Staff for the Scottish military to be cl uh, cleared up. Scottish soldier. Wimberley's book as a culmination of work that the field marshal started some time before his retirement and the reunification. It is a complete recounting of his military service, with special emphasis given to his time in the First and Second World Wars and the formation of the Scottish Republic. Wimberley argues that the Republic was a necessary action to defend Scotland and was not merely a case of opportunism. He also defends some of the more controversial actions the Scottish armed forces took under his tenure, declaring those actions kept Scotland free and made the liberation of an eventual unification with England possible. Despite massive sales in the North and Midlands, the book has come in for a fair share of controversy. Some unionists and leftists accuse Wimberley of being a malignant spirit in Scotland, and one that potentially jeopardizes both Scottish freedom and union with England. Others have claimed the book is evidence that Wimberley was merely being misunderstood the entire time, pointing to his support of Himmler and loyal services in the war as proof. Wimberley himself it has not commented on the matter. He has, however, donated a collection of personal papers to the National Re Records of Scotland, hoping they will and the books will be of aid to future researchers of the Scottish Republic. Everyone's the hero of their own story. Including us. Uh, if we do that, 100 political power. <sighs> Increasing the popularity. Actually, let's come over here. NDL. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Government stability is so 41%. Could we get that many supporters? So, 32. We need 32. Can we get 32 and do compromise with the Fort Mist? No. Can we get 32 if we do the SOP Hardliners? Literally, no. So we're going to have to spend 100 political power anyways. Uh, reforms get a boost. I'd rather do these two than do this one. Um, this sucks. I, that's, that's why I hate it. I said early in this episode, I want to go to World Scotland. I don't want Scottish councils. The Scottish councils, which has hurt, me, hurt us before on this, on this channel, cost so much political power. I'd rather do this one. And then do that one. We're not there yet. And which means we have to go back and do it with the NDL. All right, everyone. So right now, I had to compromise, as you know, with the NDL. But as you remember earlier, I haven't done these ones up here. So we're actually doing but the NDL is a leak, so we can decrease some of their support for uh, them. That's why I save this. As we endeavor to unite our own party, we shall also attempt to exploit the divisions within the National Democratic League. The loss of their party in the recent election and the fact that it has been far more factions in our own leaves it prone to far more divisions than we currently suffer. It is important that we can keep them squabbling among themselves for as long as possible because the more time they spend arguing with each other, the less time they have to criticize us. When we lose some political power and stability, but I think it's worth doing so we can decrease their support. Flaws in the party, the flaws in the system. Um, I mean, technically, we still need to read all this stuff, so. I'm, I refuse to do that one. I just refuse. I don't mind GDP getting hit really badly, but, bro, like, this is really bad. But want. Because uh, I do want to get there as fast as possible. I mean, realistically, losing 0.2 political power every single day is not worth it to get 0.05. That's just not worth it, in my opinion. But you get this, and it should be. A society of development will begin to improve, but. Jesus Christ. Want. England has had a limited social security for years now, but the collaborationist government always declined to expand it to the people who needed it the most. And so, as always, the social super party falls into the responsibility of fixing others' mistakes. Unemployment subsidies will give a great deal of aid to the more unfortunate members of our society. But we can additionally expand the social security system outright to cover a whole range of potential problems for the poorest members of our nation. Food stamps grant some money for the first-time families. Subsidies for community buildings and basic repairs. All things which our people cannot afford that we give the government, we can give, our government can give them. We shall also give them that we, that we that we shall give them. Harold Wilson will not suffer England to be anything less than perfect than this. My apologies for my mispronunciations. Holy crap! I oh boy. Uh, and then we'll do the Equal Land Distribution Act. I hope we get more political power somewhere here. The two wings of our party have always squabbled somewhat, but there's always something on which we are in full agreement on. The bourgeoisie and that aristocracy own far too many uh, great portion of the land area of England even now. And what did they do with this to earn this? In the age of the Industrial Revolution, it was the landowners who abolished the commons and seized all the property for themselves from, the fr from small freeholding farm... Uh, Farmers, freeholding of farmers. So let's begin the Social Labour Party's most ambitious project yet: an act of the Parliament which will redistribute the agricultural land of England to the communities who work it. Miners and farmers and fishermen alike, compensation will be given to the rich, but that is all. Public education will remove public education, get higher 
public education, which is okay with us. And that helps us out. Don't get me wrong. That does help us out. We do get more daily political power, but 0.33, I mean, it's better than 0.24, obviously. But I'm just trying my best here, man. I just want to do the best we possibly can. And we actually build one civvy here in England, which is actually really nice. So, And there goes the deficit. It has exploded. Well, it hasn't really exploded that much, realistically. Let's be real here. It hasn't exploded that much. But we're going to do the flaws in the system. The democratic system is one that people have a direct hand in and is a system that we had fought so hard to acquire. While some of our more radical members have proposed a system when the state has been directly controlled over everything, this has been shot down by Wilson and his entourage, luckily. With our, while our party can be divided at times into the political lines, we can agree on that there are quite a few flaws within the English political system. Whether it stems from the very simple idea of voting to the complex issues of limiting political overreach from certain parties, including our own at times, if we reform, it may take some time and lots of groundwork, but we are certain it is achievable. It will just take time and lots of elbow grease to work. Nice. Oh, we lose, uh, we lose political power. That sucks. Oh, so without boosting it up, we get points two seven, which is not bad, but... Mm. Oh, never mind. It, it, holy. Mm. Spend, 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 spend. I mean, it'd be one thing. Actually, did our growth get hurt? I thought it was 1.7 earlier. It was 1.4 for the most part. I thought it was 1.7. It's one thing if, you know, the economy is growing larger than uh, well, the, the debt, but... Or the deficit, or the, just the debt, just the debt, yeah, just the debt, but, oh my gosh! Oh crap, this is not going to be good. Uh, uh, even if we do this again, like, that's 60 total, that's 19, 60 to 19, if you get this maxed, that's 79. That we, we won't be able to get that, we just will not be able to get that. We barely can do that. We can barely do that. Right now we're 33%, which is okay. It's not great. Jesus Christ, I don't like this. Oh, why do you pain me so? Disease. Uh, I mean, if we want to go big, we're going to go big or go home. So we will do this one eventually, get more political power. I do. I am aware of this one, but still. Uh, disease. Our nation suffers. There's no great system of the public hospitals or free treatments like some of the more enlightened places of the world, but that can be changed. National insurance is a term used to refer to the program we're in, in return. For an income tax, the average person will have compensation for the workplace-related injuries or illnesses, among other things, greatly easing the burden of the ill and injured on their families. The income tax won't be especially popular in some areas. It is the wealthy who shall shoulder most of the burden here, and so it shouldn't impact their popularity by any great amount. Besides, they will receive the benefits of socialism, too. I mean, give them more money, which is nice. But I don't even care about the money at this point. Like, this this killed... Just, that's so much cost. But, I'm like, I just care about political power. Ah. I mean, I, I like that the devs did make it like, so you have to balance things out. You have to balance things out. You can't just be o overpowered and just do everything you want. There's got to be some blowback. There's got to be some sort of, you know, hit to the program that you can't just do everything you want. But so, the National Health Service Act. Healthcare has long been one of the main goals of the Socialist Labor Party, and now we are in a position where we can implement it. Why should the working man have to worry about needing to visit the doctors because they lack the money to pay? Why should women be forced to resort to midwives rather than, be, than hospital beds? Why must men and women pay for their children's vaccines, insulin, and so on out of their own pockets? They should not, and thanks to our National Health Service Act, they will never have to again. This comprehensive police legislation will establish a nation, nationwide health care system, paid for by the state, which will ensure no person ever needs to worry about necess necessary procedures, medicines, or treatments as, for as long as their government is in power. Can't wait till TNO2 comes out. TNO2 comes out and see what, 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 if we can continue, like, winning elections, what would a more SLP, you know, third victory do for England? Like, how far can we go with this? And we'll do those who are corrupt since we're so doing this stuff anyways. Corruption is something that has found itself a home in English politics, like a cancer growing and growing until it delivers a killing blow in the country. This occurred to the former Labour Party in the waning days of the Battle of Britain and Operation Sea Lion. It forced the party to collapse on in itself, and then sent its members into hiding after they've been uh, hunted down by the collaborators and the German rulers. <clears throat> We must begin to rid this corruption out of a party to make sure the SLP will not collapse in on itself like the Labour Party. Hopefully, if we succeed with our goals, we can guarantee a better future for England. When will the politicians work for the people and not the pound? Oh, they always work for the pound no matter what. They're all politicians, good or bad. At the end of the day, they're all politicians, unfortunately. I mean, technically, we could have done this twice. Actually, you know what? Next time, we'll try it. We'll risk it. We'll go one, two, boom. We'll see what happens. If it doesn't go well, I'll go back to an earlier save. Whatever. It is what it is. I mean, this could be well, better, but whatever. I just, it doesn't. Oh, hello. Yeah. Thank you. The act passes. English history is written. 
we lose some stability, we get more support, which I do like. Every owned state gives a medium increase in the economic output of domestic jobs. Great. And then we'll do this one next. Follow it up with that one. Good. All right. Uh, does this help at all a little bit? Uh, barely, but hey, it still has... Oh, never mind. Never mind. Those who are corrupt. And the National Health Service Act. Actually, where are we at for this? 33%? No, we went down even further. Holy crap. Norman St. John Stevas. George Jellico. Uh, Enoch Powell. David Sterling, of course. And then Reg Butch. Can we get any political power over here? We get more stability. Intel goes down. Focus on the far right. Well, that's okay. I mean, Anti Fascism Act? National Health Service Act. Followed up with the People's Housing Act. Now, actually, we'll do the flaws in the party next. To the public, we seem to be very, very close, ideologically unified party. However, this couldn't be far, far further from the truth. Our party is one decisive group of ideologies that has hastily been established at the end of the English Civil War. And due to this, the honeymoon period is beginning to wear off and cracks are showing themselves. In the party, there are some groups that are the main culprits in these issues, many of which are different flavors of socialism. Some radical and some of them conservative by socialist means. However, some of the main culprits include the fringe ideologies such as syndicalism, Stalinism, Rawism, and anarchists. What is entirely possible that they might not be nearly as radical as their counterparts? We mu they must be dealt with. Oh, it's not going to be easier to do. Alright, so where are we at? Yeah, we're not going to have enough. We need 50 here. We can get 24 here. 50 plus 24. If you can even max them out. That's like 70. We need 70. You know what? We're going to risk it. Let's say, boys and girls. Let's see what we can do. Let's, Because I don't want to do the NDL anymore. No more NDL. No, 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 no. That's easy way out. We'll go boom, boom. Oh, we're not going to get it. We are definitely not going to get it. Oh, my goodness. Well, we can keep reading a few more focuses, and then I'll probably reload the save. Because there's nothing we can do. Like, I hate the Scottish Council. I, that's why I literally just wanted to kill them all off. Ah. Yeah, we didn't see that one. Higher line of influence is fine, whatever. Actually, uh, well. I'll try it again some more, but we get 25 more political power. That's not too bad. I just, I hate the thing. I mean, it's so much political power. So much. You get 0.36 a day. That's just nothing. I mean, if even we got, like, 30 more here, would we have enough? We would have enough, actually. It's just so much PP. It's ridiculous. We'll probably use console commands. I'll be honest. We'll probably use console commands. I want us to be as successful as possible, but this is ridiculous. I might just go back and kill all Scotland. Like, I will manually just kill them all so we don't have to deal with this. The flaws of the party. Followed up with the Unite the Public. Uh... We'll do that one next after this election. Those who burn factories. Now that we've listed our flaws within our party, we can act on them. While we cannot outright go after the main rival, the communists, without an uproar from the party and Birch himself, we can go after some of the lesser important ideologues or ideologies in our party, such as anarchists or even syndicalists. However, unlike the ND, if unlike if the NDL was in power, we will not make a huge issue of this. Instead, we will send the constables to arrest them on charges of endangering the state. While it is possible that they may not paint us in the best color, at least make the country and party more stable. The more radicals in jail, the safer the country will be in turn. However, first we need to authorize these arrests to occur. Come on. Let them pop out. Uh, Social Democracy Act and Nepotism Act. I mean, how are we supposed to do anything here? I don't understand, but the People's Housing Act. Now that the slums have been cleared, the Socialist Labor Party can begin our work on solving the matter of squalor for good. The People's Housing Act lays out the plan for the construction of a great series of government-owned housing, uh, housing tenements, tenements and buildings across England for the purposes of affordable housing. While it's not luxurious, there will be modern dwellings in which the English poor shall have opportunities to get themselves out of the cycle of poverty with their assistance. The necessity of this act is great enough that both factions of our party agree in principle even. Of sight, few thought that they would, they would see without great prompting by the leadership. Oh, come on. Pop it up again. Pop it up again. No, I'll just even close out of that for now. It's fine. Tokyo standoff. Yeah, I think I'm, I might just go back and kill Scotland. I mean, I, we can't deal with this. I will not deal with 30% taken away. Uh, that's fine. Welsh protests. I don't care about Welsh protests. Scottish rights. I don't care about that either. Look at that. Scottish council. That's insanely bad. Insanely bad. Come on, this popped up again. Come on. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, compromise with the reformists. Give it a few days. Maybe we can get it again. We got five more. That's not even going to be... Oh, my God. That's not even going to be enough. 
All right, so we're doing the health and needs divisions. So we've passed everything so far, and we'll talk about the health care and people's housing act in just a little bit. Really, just health care, but we're doing the health and needs. We have, in recent times, done a great deal of legislation and policy making which focuses towards the societal matters, health care, wages, housing, education, and so on. It might better serve the people of England to bring changes to these things under the banner of one governmental organization. The Health and Needs Division, HAND, will be at the forefront of implementing future governmental aid and supporting programs for our welfare state. HAND will also act to advise the government on the potential effects of new changes in current policies, assisting us in maintaining a high stake or state of living for the average Englishman, regardless of his personal wealth. And as you saw, the OEA crisis has just erupted. We get nothing about it, but we do get we do lose so much. So it's actually really extremely bad for us. And now we only get, well, 0.53 political power every single day. I've already compromised with the uh, NDLs. At this point, there's nothing we can do. There's literally nothing we can do. All we're doing right now is setting us up so that we will lose the next election, if there really was the next election, which actually there might be, but we're trying to rush through everything here because we're just losing stuff. I mean, this is this is not great. This is really not great. And I'm glad I went back and actually defeated Scotland. We no longer the Scottish Council because you're the Scottish Council. Oh, uh, we have riots, but that's fine. I don't care. Um, if you have the Scottish Council, you're doomed to doomed to fail. You're just doomed to fail, which I do not like for this type of campaign, but whatever. It's my own uh, issue with that, but signs of recovery. It seems to have worked. The years of efforts, decades of revolutionary activities are beginning to show once uh, and for all the potential socialism under the English model. When one looks across at England, they will not see the poverty and rubble of the times past, but instead a land finally beginning to recover from the ravages of war. Healthcare and education are free, jobs are plentiful, and minimum wage high. This is a dream of our forefathers, and with some luck, it is something we can all maintain into the future for all of our children. Even the National Democratic League are starting to come around. So surprising as it may be, this England looks to set to last the ages of prosperity, which would be nice. And we get the thing of extra dough. Um, if you want to re read this uh, focus, please go right ahead. Actually, you know what? No, never mind. I'm going to do this one off screen just so we can get to the next stuff next as well. But honestly, the, the Scottish Council is uh, that. I don't know. It just. This seems a bit weird. I'm sure the devs put in a ton of time and effort to make this tree, but it just feels not 100% there yet. I don't know. Just for me, my own personal opinion. I know the devs are working hard and they might be watching this, but like, I don't know. At least it's bugged. At least in my opinion, this is definitely bugged. As you can tell with Harold Wilson still not here. But pretty much everything else has been the same. Um, we'll talk about health care in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and do a Red Fleet. The Royal Navy is dead. Its ships largely rusting beneath the waves were taken by the Germans, leaving us with the task of rebuilding an English Navy from what little we have left. We must ensure the Hun must never again reach our shores. At the same time, the idea of the SLP can't be forgotten, just because one is a sea. The new Navy of the Socialist Republic must reflect the ideas it protects. Women will be allowed to serve on every ship in every rank. Captains will no longer rule the ships like kings. The ranks will be given on merit and nobility, not because of family name or money. The new Navy must at once protect the people and be a symbol of the New England. And it is what it is for that. Wow. Her growth actually wasn't hurt too bad, but still. Extra dough. No. Ollie rolled up to the window and was surprised to find himself basked in warmth, a warm English sun. After weeks of a dreary river, he welcomed it. He entered the kitchen, fired up the oven, and did what he did best. As the whole bakery filled up with the rich aroma of baked goods, Ollie walked over to the pantry to make some tea. Pinned to the door was an envelope labeled Monthly Small Business Dividend with a pink rose stamped in the top right corner. Through Ollie's mind flashed memories of a different time. His family's bakery had served Winston warm, fresh goods for almost a century, but had almost been forced to close several times during the occupation. Ollie remembered his father scratching his hair that had begun to grade too soon over the rent due in the morning. He remembered hearing his parents argue whether or not he should be able to continue school or drop out to provide an extra ham. Although Ollie never had any real choice in what he wanted to do, like most of us, his children would, thanks to the subsidy provided by the socialist labor government, his children grand and grandchildren would not be forced to bake bread for eternity. This little extra bit of dough, although small, even has Ollie and his wife talking about hiring him from outside. Although his father would, had balked at taking any sort of handout from the government, Ollie saw in the payment something else, a chance for a brighter future. A little extra dough never hurt anybody. Unless you, hmm, I don't know, extra dough? Well, what if you get extra dough when you don't want dough? That's extra dough. Anyways, whatever. Um, we got other stuff to do here. The Social Democracy Act, the Nepotism Act. Um, at this point, I definitely think we need to unite the public because we need more political power. So, However, I do want to keep pushing on for more acts. So we'll do this one. And then we'll do those who burn factories. If you like to read about this one, please go right ahead again. Um, we'll get that factory stuff done. Whatever, it's fine, fine, fine. Let's get some better artillery. The, over here is okay. As you can tell, we don't have that much political power, but... Like, holy crap, that would be really bad if we saw the Scottish Councils. Um, and here are the stuff. Like, Jellico and St. John Stevens, they're still doing well. I don't know what we, we can really do about this, but we can't really do too much. 26%, 8%, 34% in total. Not very good. It's just, we're 41% here. I mean, wow. This is really bad. I mean, and there's literally nothing we can do about it. To pass all the stuff, which I guess we're not supposed to, but still. Probably will get better, but still. Like, it's insanely bad here. 
Insanely, insanely, insanely bad. Um, but this one too, of course. Which waves does Brutania rule? Scarcely among anyone can reject rebuilding of the Royal Navy for practical motivational reasons. Who does not want England to challenge and defeat all corners on the high seas? Unfortunately, budget limits us focuses forces us to focus on one of the two critical activities facing at the moment. Do we concentrate on a defensive fleet, keeping an invasion away from the coast, or do we focus on a navy that keeps a lifeline with the US open? Choices, choices. That we must decide. Yeah, if we were gonna, yeah, this is why we're gonna lose the election if we were to continue. Which we might actually have another election eventually, but my goal is to rush through here. But the Social Democracy Act and the Nepotism Act, um, every place lose a hundred jobs. Cleaning up the party. I do like this. I like this one first. The Social Democracy Act. This act is one of our main goals. It'll help make our democracy more optimized for the common worker. The corporations have caught wind of these acts and have had cries of protest. However, these have fallen on deaf ears. It's no longer necessary for us to bow to the corporations and their CEOs. Our society is too strong on its own. Away from these greedy exploiters, this act will finally give more power to the workers. The men and women who keep the country afloat with the hard work that they give us for. Or they give for us. If this act is passed by parliament, it will slowly transfer power from the CEOs and corporate boards to the workers that toil in the factories to have more influence over them. This will finally give the workers more rights to make them more powerful and to make them more comfortable in their life. Alright, come back over here and get some better tanks. Chieftains, very cool, very, very cool. And this is getting worse, but eh, whatever. Anything else? Holes who burn factories? We get a whole city. I love the cities. Those have burn. The Social Democracy Act. Now, I did ask you guys yesterday, which way should we go? Should we go with a uh, Navy to protect the coast, or should we go with a uh, Navy to protect the trade? Now, there's support for both sides, but overall, there is more support for... A Navy to protect the coast. Rule Britannia, rule the waves. Britons never will be slaves, as the old song does go. But our rule of the waves ended long decades ago, and we spent too long as slaves. The days of a British Navy that helped rule an empire that spanned continents are gone. What the workers need from the new English Navy is a force that protects it from any invasion. That can react quickly, of course, and decisively to any threats that dare to approach our shores. Another sea line must never happen. Uh, the Kriegsmarine will not humiliate us a second time. Hopefully. Hopefully. Oh, and there goes a mandate to Siberia. The CSR has won. Good luck, guys. Good luck. The WRF is probably... Oh, there goes parts of Iraq. Oh, that's a... That looks really, really big. Bigger than it maybe it's supposed to be, but Novosibirsk? Oh, good amount of... Uh, oh, that's a lot more manpower. And they have only literally half the factories. They're probably going to die. These guys have more divisions, too, so they're probably going to die. Which, you never know. Now, I wanted to make sure that we keep doing these acts over time. Just because, we, as you see, we only get 0.53 political power. If I were to replace this, fa this uh, nation again under Wilson, you know, England under Wilson, I will probably don't. I will probably spend very, 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 very little political power here. Honestly, it's not worth it. Over here as well, too. So, I wanted to make sure we got more government stability, but it is what it is. Alright, auto-saving. Followed up with what? Ah, yes. 21 days is pretty good. Yeah, but auction, I don't think any of this stuff will give us actual political power here. Which would be nice, but I really doubt it, so. War support, yeah, nothing there. Just more stuff added to the debt. And we can't win. Anything we do here, we cannot win. So, unfortunately, we gotta keep doing that. And to make sure that we lose the elections next time, because even if we did the other ones, like, I did this. I tested this out, like, two or three times with different acts. Even if we did both of these four times in total, you know, like, twice each, we would still lose. We would still lose, so you're forced. You're literally forced to do the NDL. So, my apologies about that, but I tried the best I could. The game forces you to do that. But, cleaning up the party. Now that we have made it this far with our reforms and cleaning of society, government, and the parliament, it is time for us to clean the SLP. Many of the fringe ideologies can now be, of course, removed after we do this stuff as well. My apologies about that. Um... Cutting up the body, this will definitely hurt the unity, very unity of our party, and rock the foundation that we had been forming, formed on. However, it is for the better. Many of them, such as Rawas, Stalinists, Cynicalists, and any living anarchist, will be expelled from the party in the coming weeks, with their party membership revoked, with their seats in parliament replaced with a more liberal but still socialist member, such as Social Democrats and even modern MPs. Anything is better than the hordes of radicals that had been in the party since its inception. Like anything, however, all can be healed with time, and this includes the unity of the SLP, which we're going to just keep losing voters this way. But it is what it is. We are going to enjoy losing voters. And let us conclude this episode with what? It is down to this. Uh, join a union. Many of the political unions that used to inhabit England are slowly coming back after the defeat of the collaborators in the English Civil War. Now that they are making a resurgence, we should publicly mention and promote them. Luckily that we are in power, we have the means of promoting them very heavily. One way of doing this is by producing posters that have vividly or vivid imagery. They will influence many of the workers in England to join unions to voice their opinions on current politics and keep themselves or help themselves in their careers. There are many anti-unionists in England, however, with many of them sharing membership with the NDL. Luckily, the workers and lower class people of England outnumber them greatly. Let's hope the unions 
join membership so that we can gain allies. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we're going to continue struggling, trying to pass every single act possible. And also, before we let go here, I do want to show you we were on public healthcare earlier, and now we're on universal healthcare. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.